Thank you. Okay, beautiful. So if you are happy to do so, I would suggest that our first position is to lay on your back, not quite in Shavasana pose. You might find that you want to bend the knees to support the lower back. You may feel comfortable to extend the legs. And remember to set that intention to turn the palms up towards the ceiling, to soften the jaw, to relax the tongue in the well of the mouth and to invite all the muscles of the body to soften and release. Invite the weight of the bones to sink a little more deeply into the earth beneath you so that you feel fully supported here. Notice that support from the back of the head along the back of the neck, across that space over the flats of the shoulder blades. Remember the spine doesn't make a straight line. So honour that release between the shoulder blades, that gentle lift at the small of the back. Feel your lower body weight equally distributed through the back of the hips and either the back of the heels or the soles of the feet. Bring your awareness to the breath. Feeling the sensations of the breath. The cool air on the breath in. The warm air on the breath out. deepening the inhalation and lengthening the exhalation. Observe the journey of your breath. Notice without judgment, anywhere the breath may feel a little tight. Focus on a deeper exhalation, releasing that tension, creating space. Feeling each subsequent in-breath expand and widen into the lungs and the ribcage. Each lengthened out-breath, relieving your body of tension. Inhaling deeply, exhaling fully, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Allow yourself the freedom to make the breath a little noisier constricting that space at your throat centre. Turning that breath into an Ujjaya breath. With the Ujjaya breath, you have the sense that the breath is being pushed upwards from the diaphragm. Releasing noisily over the throat chakra. The sensation is almost as though you're fogging up a mirror with your breath. Inhaling deeply through the nose. Exhaling fully through the mouth. Take a further deep breath in through the nose. This time releasing the out breath with an audible sigh. <sighs> 
Let's repeat that sense of relaxing the throat muscles now, that audible sigh. <sighs> Sending a clear message to your body that we are ready to begin the work of our practice. <sighs> Nudging your breath back now towards a natural, easy rhythm just so that you don't feel you're forcing the breath. Becoming aware again of the space that surrounds you. Feeling your connection through the back of the body. Noticing the cool air in the room against your face, your hands and your feet. And gently starting to reawaken the physical body here. Wiggling fingers, wiggling toes, wiggle the jaw a little, wiggle the nose. If you chose to take this opening Shavasana with knees bent, please take a moment to extend the legs along the mat. Let's draw the feet a little closer together. Let the ankles soften. Again, notice that weight through the collarbones, through the shoulder blades. Inhaling now to lift the arms overhead, taking a long stretch, pointing through fingers and toes, bringing the thumbs together in an interlock, drawing the toes in towards the shins in flexion, pushing through the heels. On an exhale, squeezing the upper body to the right, feeling that opening through the left of the waist and the ribcage. Inhaling to return to center, again pointing through fingers and toes, then return, feet to flexion, thumbs to interlock. As you exhale to the left side, opening out through the right of the waist and the ribcage. Inhale again to return to centre. A further full body stretch. Reaching a little more further with the right hand, then through the left hand. So we're easing the side of the ribcage, lifting the ribcage from the belly. Then extending through both hands, pointing through the toes. Then exhaling now to draw the right knee towards the chest, pressing the hand to the shin or bringing the hand behind the thigh if that's more comfortable. Then directing that right knee out towards the right shoulder. So take care when you do this redirection that you don't just simply roll over onto the right hip. Let's keep the back of the hips square allowing for a little more space through the hips, through the groin, drawing that knee back towards centre, repositioning the hands behind the thigh, holding the back of the thigh in an interlock as you press the heel towards the ceiling, drawing the sole of the foot parallel to the ceiling. For now, this will feel very tight to the back of the hamstring. So we'll loosen this off, inhaling to point, Exhaling to flex, inhaling to point, exhaling to flex. Pressing a little more keenly through the heel, keeping hold of that thigh as you now use the big toe to draw three circles in towards the midline of the body. Then change direction, take those circles the opposite way. Bring the foot back to flexion, press through the heel, then guide the thigh a little closer to the chest. Keep the bottom on the floor, keep pressing through the heel, deepening that release through the back of the hamstring. Then bend that right knee in, replacing that right leg along the mat, bringing the left knee in. So same sequence, applying a little pressure to the front of the left shin, opening that space in the lower back, then finding a release through the front of the hips into the groin, directing that left knee out to the left shoulder, keeping the hips and the shoulders square. As you draw that knee back to centre, repositioning the hands behind the thigh and pushing gently through the heel. We often find we have one leg less flexible than the other. So if this is your tighter leg, take care 
Keep a little bend in the knee, press through the heel, then release that tension by pointing the toe, exhaling to flex the toe. And we're just gently working through this range of movement to open out a little more into the calf. Then as you push more keenly through the heel, finding that space at the back of the thigh. Now using the big toe to draw three circles in towards the midline of the body. Then changing direction, taking those circles the opposite way. Bring the foot back to full flexion. Keep pressing through the heel as you guide that left thigh a little closer to the belly. Remind yourself not to lift the bottom from the floor, pressing a little more keenly through the heel. Then bending that left knee in and extending that left leg along the mat. Bring the hands to an interlock behind the back of the head. So we're resting the back of the head into the open palms. We're resting the back of the hands on the floor and opening the elbows wide. You may feel the upper arms and the forearm rest to the floor. Exhale to draw the toes in towards the shins, pushing through the heels. Inhale to point the toes away. On the next exhalation, draw the toes back to flexion, engage the core. Keep this sense of tension in the lower body. Then on the next out breath, lead with the right elbow, drawing the elbow to your right side as you turn your gaze along the length of the left elbow. So we're really opening into that left rib cage, a little compression to the right of the waist. Engaging the core now, inhaling to come back to centre, relaxing the ankles. Exhaling to come back to flexion, engage the core, lead with the left elbow, turn the gaze this time along the right arm. Intention here is to keep the forearm and the upper arm attached to the floor. Then exhaling to release, bringing the head back towards centre. Let's take the hands away from the back of the head, reposition them either side of the hips, squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, then on an out breath, press the fingertips all the way down towards the ankles. On the next out breath, relax the weight of the chest so that we open through the collarbones sink in through the flats of the shoulder blades. Draw the tummy button in, then slide the feet in to bend the knees. Let's position the heels hip width apart, insides of the feet parallel. Push down now into the soles of the feet, lifting the bottom from the floor. You want to feel that opening through the collarbones, so go ahead and press the shoulders to the floor. Inhale to press the shins forward, lifting the thighs a little higher. Take care that the knees don't drift open, that we remain fully connected from the big toe mound all the way through to the little toe. Inhaling again to press the shins forward, opening once more into those thighs, the hip flexors. On the next inhalation, lift the arms overhead, rest the backs of the hands to the floor. Then on and out breath, start at the space between the shoulder blades to gently roll down through the spine. Let's not rush this. Let's enjoy this gentle release vertebra by vertebra, noticing those points where the tightness lifts the shoulders from the floor. Relax the collarbones again. Bring that space at the lower back to fully release to the floor. Reposition the hands either side of the hips. Then draw the soles of the feet together. On an out breath, let the knees roll open. So it's natural to feel that one knee has a little more space to open than the other. Visualize sending the breath to the side that feels a little more resistant to you. And as you exhale, just let gravity soften that knee a little wider. Allow this gentle release, very passive. Focusing on the breath. 
every out breath. Finding a little more space in the inner thigh, in and around the hips. Then as you exhale, engage the core, draw the thighs towards one another, repositioning the knees hip width apart. Again, exhale to draw the tummy button in, closing that little gap under the lower back. Then inhale to lift and lengthen through the right leg, bringing that foot to flexion, pushing through the heel. So same action as we did earlier, the difference being we're not holding the leg and we have that left knee bent, which has the action of supporting the lower back. Inhale to point, exhale to flex. Inhale to point, exhale to flex. Then bend that right knee to replace that foot to the floor. Keep the core engaged. We'll do the same on the left leg. So taking your time, pressing through the heel to begin with, coming to that lovely long extension. Then inhaling to point, exhaling to flex. Just finding an extra few millimetres to the back of the legs into the calf. Bringing that foot to flexion, pushing through the heel, then bending that left knee, replacing feet to the floor. Slide the arms up so that the hands make a T-shape coming from the shoulders. Palms again turned up to the ceiling. And again, we want that sense of the shoulders relaxed away from the ears. On an out breath, draw the tummy button in, lift both feet from the mat, draw the thighs a little closer to the belly. So once so we're doing a little um, apanasana, a little wind relieving pose without the hands. Then on the out breath, roll the knees to the right side, turning your gaze along the length of the left arm. You might expect here to feel a little resistance through the side of the chest into the shoulder. So work with the breath to soften that shoulder to the mat, to relax the neck. Turning your gaze along the left hand. Inhaling to the side of the ribcage. Exhaling to widen and soften into this space. On the next out breath, draw the tummy button in. Support the weight of the knees as you roll through center. Then take that twist to the opposite side. This time turning your gaze along the length of the right arm. Just notice any messages being sent back from the body. Any tension in the groin, any resistance in the lower back, or perhaps that tightness again through the side of the chest and the shoulder. Every out breath sinking a little more deeply into this space. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in roll the knees back towards centre. Now we'll keep the knees stationed above the hips, but we'll separate the feet to make sure that they're hip width apart, toes pointing up towards the ceiling. So for those of you who have um, a little weakness in the lower back, you may prefer to just draw the knees a little closer to the chest. That will be easier to maintain. You can feel how the pelvis lifts gently when you draw the knees in. That's sometimes better support for the lower back. Now lift the arms straight above the chest, palms facing in towards one another, lowering the shoulders away from the, sh the ears. Every out breath, drawing the tummy button in. Every in breath, expanding and widening into the ribcage. Notice that gentle tugging in the core, Every out breath, filling that space in the lower back, toes pointing up towards the ceiling. And we'll make that a little more active. On the out breath, keep the core engaged and slide the thumbs back to rest those thumbs an inch from the floor. We're taking the weight of the arms away from the centre of the body. So it's not unusual here to feel a sense of everything lifting. So if need be, draw the thighs a little closer, just to keep the lower back supported. On the next out breath, 
extend the right leg forward hover that heel an inch from the floor keeping that left knee at that 90 degree angle again you can play about with this if you need the knee a little closer you might find that it just supports the lower back a little more engage the core bring that knee back to center then extend the left leg forward wide through the chest every out breath tugging the tummy button towards the spine then as you exhale engage the core bring that knee back again to center let's reposition the hands directly above the chest soften the shoulders again down towards the floor exhale to draw the tummy button in and gently push that lower back towards the mat on the next inhale press the right heel towards the ceiling so rather than lowering the leg and holding the weight of the leg we're getting back into that long stretch to the back of the hamstring inhale to point exhale to flex push again through the heel now use the big toe and draw those circles again mobilizing the ankle working through full range of movement not cutting any corners here coming back to flexion then bending that right knee pressing the left heel up pushing through the sole of the foot inhaling to point exhaling to flex pressing a little more keenly through the heel then once more using the big toe to mobilize the ankle just to loosen off any of those tight edges at the back of the hamstring work in both directions then we'll keep that left leg pressing towards the ceiling we'll bring the right leg up so both feet open towards the ceiling ideally ironing out those little bends in the knees pushing through the heels engaging the core keeping the core engaged as you lower the heels down about a third of the way the longer your legs the heavier that will feel then on the out breath hug the knees in towards the chest Let's keep the hands on the shins or the knees as we draw a little figure of eight shape just to release the lower back, that tight space across the back of the hips. Then as you roll back to centre, replace both feet on the mat, then take your time to roll to one side. When you're ready, push up. Beautiful. So the benefit of releasing tension that we hold in the backs of the legs and the calves is that it often pays off further up the body, particularly into the lower back and sometimes into the space between the shoulders. We don't realise how connected all that tension is through the back of the body. So I'm going to suggest that we come to a cross leg to begin with, lifting up and lengthening out of the sit bones, maintaining that line from the back of the head to the tailbone, and rather than holding the shoulders to attention, just shrugging the shoulders down away from the ears. Let's bring the left hand to rest on the right shoulder. We'll bring the right hand to rest on the left shoulder. So we're effectively stacking the elbows one on top of the other. Engage the core, inhale to lift and lengthen. Then on the next exhale, gently take your gaze over the right shoulder taking care to follow the nose rather than the chin. Keep that core engagement, that inhale to lift and lengthen again. The exhale, we're going to trace all the way over to the left shoulder, keeping the underside of the chin parallel to the floor. On the next out breath, engage the core. Let's draw the head back to center realign the back of the head with the tailbone then an out breath to gently nod the chin towards the chest just allow the weight of your head to pull into that space between the back of the shoulder blades 
perhaps gives you a little release at the back of the neck. Engage the core, then inhale to lift back to centre, then separate the hands. Let's bring the hands in an interlock behind the lower back. Avoid, if you can, leaning forward to compensate for this action. So try to keep the back of the head lined up with the tailbone, the tummy button drawn in. Engage the core and lift the arms away from the lower back. The chin should remain soft, so we're not pushing over the finish line. Wide through the chest. Then on the exhale, release and bring the hands back to the lower back. Reposition the hands on the mat behind the hips, shoulder blades drawn together, inhaling to lift the chest, turning the gaze up towards the ceiling. Keep drawing those shoulders away from the ears, lifting through the sternum, pressing the shins towards the floor, opening into that space through the ribcage. As you exhale, draw the tummy button in, lift back to centre, Make sure that your gaze is forward as you extend the right hand away, lift to look up to the left hand, then come over the midline of the body. Turn the gaze to the middle finger of the left hand, keeping the hips square, the sit bones equally weighted, making sure that left knee isn't lifted to centre. Engage the core, inhale, lift and lengthen. Take that extension to the opposite side, Opening into that side of the rib cage, this time keeping the right knee weighted. Exhale to engage the core. Inhale to lift back to centre. Wonderful. Now switch that leg cross over. We'll have the opposite foot in front, behind. And we'll extend both arms forward. Again, we'll shrug the shoulders up. Then we'll release, just letting them go. Inhale to squeeze the shoulders up. A little more release as we roll the shoulders back and down. Press through the fingertips, wide through the collarbones, engaged in the core. Now bring the palms together, right forefinger to the top of left, opening the hands towards the heart. Keep that core engaged. Turn the palms inside out. Inhale to lift the arms up. Parking the ears between the upper arms, softening the shoulders, relaxing and widening through the chest. Keeping the sit bones equally weighted as we take the weight to the right side, turning the gaze up to the left corner of the room. Engage the core, come back to centre, then we'll take that extension to the opposite side. Trying not to um, lean forward in this position. Keep the back of the neck in a neutral shape. Engage the core, come back to centre, shoulders away from the ears. Keep that core engagement as you float the hands back to chest level. Wonderful. Now turn the hands inside out and we'll do that hug that we did earlier on the opposite side. So opposite hand on top, stacking the elbows one on top of the other. This time lowering the chin towards the chest, then tracing the line of the collarbone to take the chin up towards the right shoulder. Then keeping that trace of the collarbone as you smooth the chin all the way over to the opposite side. Lower the chin back to the chest. Engage the core. Line up the back of the head with the tailbone as you lift your gaze. Widen the arms, turn the palms up towards the ceiling, press through the fingertips. So we're up, taking up as much space as we can through the side of the rib cage, through our outstretched hands, keeping those shoulders relaxed away from the ears, bringing the fingertips in towards the palms, making thumbs. So we're pressing the fingertips in towards the base of the fingers, shoulder blades drawn together, taking a moment to gently close the eyes or soften your focus as you bring your full awareness to the breath. Inhaling deeply to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Exhaling fully from the collarbones, the chest and the belly last. 
Inhaling, expanding and widening into the space. Then exhaling to soften and release. One further full breath in. Then as you exhale, blink the eyes open. Lift the arms up overhead. Bring the palms together this time, pushing through the fingertips, parking the ears between the upper arms. Shoulders are feeling warm now. Engage the core. Then as you exhale, bring the hands back towards the heart. Reposition the hands behind the hips, shoulder blades drawn together, opening into the uh, sternum. Press the shins forward, lift the bottom from the floor, open into the front of the body, particularly into the thighs and the hip flexors. Take care not to lift the belly or the hips higher than required. Think again about a diagonal line from the knee through the hip to the shoulder. Then as you exhale, release and bring the sit bones back to the floor. Lift up and lengthen. Then we'll simply take the legs wide into a comfortable wide leg position. So don't feel that you have to go to your widest possible moment. And let's keep a little slack behind the knees. Toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Lovely. Then we'll bring the right hand to the outside of the left ear. And it feels like gentle pressure. But rather than lifting this right shoulder up, we're effectively going to just follow the right ear and watch it come down towards the right shoulder. The left hand is on the left thigh and we're just going to roll that shoulder back and away from the ear. So deepening the stretch through the side of the neck. Engage the core, separate the hand from the ear, then bring the opposite hand up and over. So again, we'll just rest the right palm on the thigh, exhale to start that first stretch to the side of the neck, then roll that right shoulder open. It just intensifies the release. Then as you exhale, engage the core, lift the head back to center. Reposition the hands in front of the body. So it's almost as though the hands are directly underneath the shoulders. Squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, then roll the shoulders back and down, opening through the heart space. Keep those toes in flexion. As you exhale, start to ease forward into this space. So we haven't done a lot of, um, I guess, preparing the inner thighs other than that supine Baddha So be kind to yourself, don't overdo it. If you feel it on the back of the knees, then back off. Remember that your friend here is to keep that diagonal from the back of the head to the tailbone. You're really not doing yourself any favours if you curve the spine. You want to really feel this action in the inner thighs. Then as you exhale, engage the core. As you inhale, walk back towards centre. Lovely. So bring the soles of the feet towards one another. I feel it's been a while since we've done a shoulder stand, so I thought that might be quite a nice thing to do today. Quite a nice thing, just thought I'd chuck that in there. Um, <laughs> so all that prep work that we've done through the shoulders, through the back of the neck, that's kind of so that we feel the confidence to support the weight of the body. Remember when we do a shoulder stand, you're not really resting onto the neck. There's so much control in the core, that's the key. When we get up into our um, shoulder stand position, I will take the legs apart and then we'll come into that Baddha So I just wanted to make sure that the inner thighs were prepared for that, but we didn't have to overdo it. So if you want to stay seated, I will demonstrate for you quickly what the shape is and then I can watch you do it. And then it's much safer because I can see what you're doing on the screen. So we're rolling back. And we're using the hands effectively to lift the hips up. Now, this is not the right position. There's too much weight here through the back of the hips. We want to come all the way to centre. See that straight line from where the back touches the floor to the bottom. I always start with the knees bent. The knees bent mean that there's much less pressure on the lower back. 
then when you feel ready, extend the legs. Now notice how gravity pulls the feet over the head. So our intention is to bring the heels to line up with the back of the bottom. Then when we're ready, we'll take the feet wide. We'll draw the feet together. Then we'll bring the knees back together in the bent knee position. We'll support the spine and we'll roll down. That's all we need to do first time out. So shoulder stands, no ploughs. When we do ploughs, we give in a little bit to gravity. So I want to get the, um, the discipline of getting the technique right in shoulder stand. So Ruth, you can see that your thighs are quite significantly coming over your face. So you need to push those feet up so that they're parallel to the ceiling, which is a big ask. So we're kind of bringing the hips closer towards the body and pushing the heels back towards lining up with the back of the bottom. I know it feels strange, but that's when we know we're doing it right. Then when you're ready, you can open out into that wide leg position. And it might be that even when you're uh, there, you can make that shape a little better by lifting the bottom a little more. So creating that line, excellent. Now draw the soles of the feet together, coming into the Baddha Nice, see how easy it is when you're upside down. It's like being a kid again. Wonderful. Then bring the knees towards one another again. That will bring us back to the nice, gentle bent knee position. And then support the space in the lower back as you slowly roll yourself towards the floor. And if you're top heavy like me, you'll be pinged back up. <laughs> and there's not a lot we can do about that. We just have to go with gravity. Perfect. Did anyone remember to breathe when you were lying on your back? There's a few red faces you're all like oh breathing I thought that was optional perfect so we're going to do it again but I'm going to give you a little bit of a rest before we do um, and then the next time we'll go into the plow pose and you'll kind of understand the benefit of why I wanted you to get to that first position which I've heard in kind of western yoga being called candle because that's a good shape if you think because it's a straight line um, I'm sure I did it once when we sang the, the tune three blind mice do I mean that? Do I mean three blind mice? Is that the one where she chops off the... I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm making it up. So if you're back up in your cross leg position, let's go back to the first cross leg that we did, not the second. So for me, it's always right foot to the front is my first position. Then lift up out of the sit bones and as you exhale, we'll take that forward fold. There's a reason I didn't do it the first time round. It's a really lovely way of releasing that space in the lower back that we sometimes hold a little tight when we do the shoulder stand position. And it's a lovely way of relaxing the shoulders, the back of the neck. And if you can bring one fist on top of the other and bring the forehead to rest here, then yes, you will get a deeper stretch underneath the buttocks to the back of the thighs but it will also serve to really let go through the shoulders and the back of the neck. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in. As you inhale, walk yourself back to centre. Then we'll bring the knees back in to this bent knee position. And guess what? You're rolling back again. So, Remember to use the breath to your advantage. So every time you exhale, you engage the core, you feel strong. Every time you inhale, you bring length to the body, you re-energize the body. So think about that breath action when you're in your upside down position. So roll yourself firstly into that shoulder stand position. Start with the bent knees because it will protect the lower back. Beautiful. And from the angle I'm looking at, it looks like you all could do to have that bottom a little higher. So walk the hands a little further down and that will effectively push the bottom up and it will give you that, that's better, that will give you that length, wonderful. Now you can unbend the knees when you're ready 
and then bring the toes to come over head. So it might be that you get to almost a 90 degree angle, which is lovely. And if you're happy there, then stay there. It might be that when you get there, the backs of the legs become tight again, so you have to bend the knees, in which case I would suggest that's enough for you. It might be that gravity allows you to bring the toes towards the floor. All the while supporting the back. And we only take the hands away from the lower back when the toes are on the floor. If the toes aren't on the floor, keep the hands in the lower back. We need to support the spine. Lovely. Lovely. So again, bring your awareness to the breath. Again, it's angle sometimes when I'm looking at you, but some of you look as though you're almost leaning to one side. That's okay. Just ask yourself why. What's causing that tightness or that release on that side? Engage the core. Follow through on the breath. Try not to hold the breath. And then as you start to prepare yourself now to come back to a seated position, start by bending the knees. I promise you if the legs are shorter, it makes that rolling down a lot more pleasant. Perfect. And remember, if you are pinged up because of gravity, do take a moment to just bring yourself back to centre because the problem with pinging up is you've been upside down so you might feel a little bit dizzy. Beautiful. So we'll come back into a cross-legged position again, but we'll come into the second side. So as I see, my second side will always be the left foot to the front. Perfect. Then we're going to bring left hand to right knee. And we're again, we're taking care that we're not pulling that knee in. So if anything, we're gently applying pressure. The right hand behind the hip, lifting up out of the sit bones. Start by opening the rib cage. Then you can turn your gaze over the shoulder. The issue with having warmed the neck so much is that there's a temptation to just look over the shoulder because we've got the mobility to do so now. So now that we're in this lovely um, stretch position, can you inhale to lift again out of the sit bones, exhale to come a little more deeply into the twist. Engage the core, inhale now to lift the arms up as you bring the shoulders to face front, underside of the chin parallel to the floor, then bring the palms together press through the fingertips position the ears between the upper arms soften the inner thighs engage the core inhale to lift and lengthen out of the sit bones then on the next out breath opposite hand to opposite knee lift and lengthen follow the side of the rib cage it's only when you feel that you are comfortably open through the rib cage that you then take your gaze over that shoulder Notice if you've lifted your shoulder, let's relax the shoulder away from the ear. Inhale to lengthen again. Exhale to come a little more deeply into this twist. Then return your gaze again to face forward. Lovely. Nice work. So we're going to keep the hands positioned just to the front of the knees and we're almost using this to kind of pull the knees but not so that we're lifting our weight off the sit bones. As you exhale draw the tummy button in, roll through the spine and nod the chin to the chest. So this feels like a seated upright cat stretch. Then the opposite to that is to apply gentle pressure to the palms as you inhale, lift the sternum, draw the shoulder blades back, then turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Exhale to roll through the spine, so cat stretch. Try to get into that lower back if you can. I practically roll onto the tailbone to achieve this. Then inhale to lift and come back to center. So let's add in the breath that we've done intentionally with the action. So exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale.
Last one. And back to neutral spine. Perfect. Underside of the chin again, parallel to the floor. Bring the hands once more to an Anjali Mudra, lining up the back of the head with the back of the tailbone, engaging the core. Inhale to lift the arms up overhead, parking the ears between the upper arms. Exhale to draw the tummy button in. Inhale to lengthen more out of the sit bones, keeping that nice die line from the back of the head to the tailbone. Then on the out breath, drawing the hands back to heart. Repositioning the hands either side of the hips, keeping the sit bones connected to the floor as you simply open through the sternum and turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Then on and out breath, release. And we'll move out of this cross leg position and come into a dandasana position. So extend the legs forward, lifting out of the sit bones. And if you notice any curvature in your spine, just check in because oftentimes it's not the spine that's tight. Oftentimes it's the back of the thighs. So if you give a little bend in the knees, it might allow you a little more lift and lengthen. Shoulders release back and down. Extend both arms forward. Press through the fingertips, toes pointing up towards the ceiling. On a big noisy out breath now, flatten the back of the thighs to the floor. Draw the tummy button in. On an in breath, lift the arms up overhead. Press through the fingertips, soften the shoulders down away from the ears. Visualize the breath across the rib cage. So really widening into this space softening the shoulders, the collarbones, release them back and down. Every out breath, we're drawing the tummy button in, supporting the lower back. Every in breath, we're lifting a little more keenly out of the sit bones. Then as you exhale, reposition the hands just behind the hips. My preference is fingertips turned out. As we walk the feet in, push down into the soles of the feet, then lift the bottom from the floor. Pressing the shins forward, lifting the thighs, the belly, the chest. Wide through the collarbones, trying not to hold the breath in this posture. Make the out breath a little noisier if you wish. Then as you exhale, release the sit bones to the floor. Let's swish our position around so that we come into an all fours posture. Knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. Now we're keeping in this space of the top of the shoulders, the back of the shoulder blades and the neck. So walk the hands a little further forward, keep the elbows soft, and then it press the sit bones back towards the heels, lowering the head down so that the ears end up between the upper arms. We keep the shoulders away from the ears. Every out breath, easing a little more deeply into this space. Just notice that if you bring your forehead to the floor, it might take the ears down lower than the upper arms. And for the purposes of this stretch, we want to make sure that we're nicely aligned here. Lift the fingertips from the mat, press the wrists to the floor. Imagine little windscreen wipers with the hands here, taking the windscreen wipers from one side to the other. Then replace the palms to the floor, lower down onto the elbows, slide the thighs back, lift up into a sphinx posture. So again, checking in that the shoulders aren't lifted, that they're back and down. A little half tilt of the hips to press the thighs to the floor. Exhaling to look over one shoulder, inhaling to look ahead, exhaling to look over the other shoulder, inhaling to look ahead, then lower down, bring the hands either side of the chest, draw the elbows in, push down into the palms, keep the thighs stuck to the mat as you lift the chest from the floor. If this feels very exaggerated on your lower back, 
by all means keep the elbows bent or repeat that sphinx pose. On the exhale, engage the core, push back again into that lovely long child's pose position. Lift back up, reset the knees under the hips. We'll take the left wrist under the left shoulder, but we'll take the right palm further forward. On the out breath, bring the left shoulder and ear to the floor, twisting the right side of that rib cage up towards the ceiling. Then we'll push into the right hand and take that puppy dog twist to the opposite side. Then extend both arms forward. As you lift your body weight forward, position the shoulders directly above the wrists. So we start with a little bent knee, so we're kind of on the shins, then turn the toes under, lift the knees from the mat, come into a plank pose. Wide through the chest, engage through the core, and remember, the only function of lifting the bottom is just to engage the core a little more, just if we're overloading the arms. So try not to have the bottom too lifted. It changes the emphasis of the strength here. Focus on the breath. Keep the back of the head lifted so it's not rolling down onto the floor. Stay wide through the collarbones. Then on the exhale, lower down onto the right forearm, the left forearm. Then lift yourself up, left wrist, right wrist. Then lower down, left forearm, right forearm. Then come back up, right wrist, left wrist. Then lower down, back into an all fours position. Resetting the wrists under the shoulders, the knees under the hips, turning the toes under, exhaling to draw the tummy button in, rolling up through the spine. Resetting that neutral spine position. For now, we'll just rest on the tops of the feet so that we're not fully active. Then we'll come down onto the forearms again. So when you're on your forearms, bring the tips of the thumbs together and then we're going to walk the knees in a little so it just closes off the space between the knees and the elbows. Now bring the, forehead, the top of the head to the floor and wrap the back of the hands, so interlock the hands around the back of the head. It might be you need to walk the knees in a little closer again. The elbows remain shoulder width apart, no further, turn the toes under, lift the bottom up, keep lifting through the tailbone, making that lovely long line from the back of the head to the tailbone. We can stay in this position for ages if we've got it perfectly poised. If there's too much pressure on the head, you need to take the weight further back, lifting the tailbone, and you want to feel a little release or a little opening, should I say, through the back of the thighs. Then on the next out breath, keep the core engaged as you lower down onto the shins. Sit the bottom down onto the heels. Reposition the hands one on top of the other and bring the forehead to rest here. Just stay in this forward position rolling the forehead over the top of the hands, bringing one ear, then the other ear parallel to the floor, keeping that neck nice and soft. Then repositioning the hands under the shoulders, returning again to that all fours position. Quick legging adjustment. <laughs> if your t-shirt's now about your ears like mine is. Turn the toes under, nice and soft in the elbows. Push the sit bones back, lift up and come into a downward facing dog position. So because I've kind of left the easier posture to the end, you'll probably feel that this down dog doesn't feel as resistant as it normally does. 
I dare say we've still got a little bit of clearance underneath the heels. But what I'm hoping we'll find is that there's a lot more release through the spine, lifting the tailbone, opening the back of the thighs to the back of the room, trying if you can to keep the ears between the upper arms rather than nodding the chin in. You want to keep that neutral line on the back of the neck. As you exhale, just take the heels a little more deeply towards the floor, lift the tailbone on the inhale. If we're perfectly positioned here, we will not be feeling tension on the wrists or the shoulders. We will be equally weighted through all four points touching the floor. Focus on the breath. Every exhalation, drawing the tummy button in. Every inhalation, drinking that energy from the earth along the length of the arms. Breathing out through the soles of the feet. Then on the next out breath, take your time to lower down onto the shins. Sit back on the heels. And again, I'm going to use two fists stacked this time to bring the forehead onto the back of either the hands or the fists, whatever clearance you need. And just tune into your breath here. Widen through the space at the back of the shoulder blades. Ideally, we should feel soft here. No tension. Just focus on the breath. Then reposition the hands under the shoulders. Take a moment to bring yourself up into the hero pose position, which I'm not going to keep you in. I just want to get your heads up off the floor because you're like, Ugh, no. <laughs> We'll just turn the head over one shoulder, keep the underside of the chin parallel to the floor as you turn the head over the other shoulder. Keep those shoulders away from the ears, lift through the sternum, tuck the tailbone under and just turn the gaze up towards the ceiling. So lengthening the back of the neck, opening the front of the chest. Then bring your gaze forward. Lift the shoulders up towards the ears. Then as you exhale, shrug, let them go. Lift the shoulders up, gently roll them back and down, drawing little circles, letting go of any creaks and groans here. And when you feel ready, find yourself a comfortable Shavasana position. So I'm mindful that we've done a lot of strength work today, so you may want to lay on your back. You may want to just send out an SOS that you might fall asleep for someone to rouse you in an hour. <laughs> I'm not judging. What do you think I'm going to do after this? So I dreamt last night that um, I was late for this class, that I didn't start it till 9.25 and I turned up in my pyjamas. No one cared. <laughs> they were like, yeah, that's fine. That's really cool. That's really relaxed. So I, I felt very at home. <laughs> so take a few moments to get yourself comfortable. You know, test how you feel bending the knees, extending the legs. It may be that you've kind of released some of the tension that you have in everyday life today. Some of the stuff that we've done has really worked to unlock the lower back and particularly that tightness that we hold in the back of the legs. Widen the hands and the feet, equal distance from the midline of the body. And once more, tune into the breath. Remember to come to the end of each full breath transaction.
And again, head for that slightly noisier breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Allowing any tension that remains in the body, release with an audible sigh. Simply rest here and breathe here. Recharging your body. Re-energizing. Feeling yourself expand and widen into the space that surrounds you. Drawing energy from the earth beneath you. As you settle the weight of your bones. As you release any tension in the muscles and the joints. Reminding yourself to unclench the jaw. Soften the tongue in the well of the mouth to allow a little whisper of breath between the lips. Rather than holding yourself, give your weight to Mother Earth. Let her hold you. Release. Every out breath, the letting go. Shanti Shanti Now gradually return sensation to the physical body. Rotating the wrists and the ankles. 
gently rocking the head from one side to the other, reawakening the back of the head, softening the neck. Taking a moment to blink the eyes open. Then if you wish, taking a long stretch or hug the knees to the chest. Rolling to one side. And preparing to come to a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to an Anjali Mudra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.